I'm muted. Excellent. I hope you can uh, all hear me. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for joining uh, this virtual town hall. My name is Carlo Cacavalli. I'm the executive director of uh, AI Los Angeles. And before I introduce our president, Greg Verabian, uh, somehow, um, house kidding, you have received an email including the agenda, the purpose of today's meeting, and detailing the terms of your participation, the sharing, and the Q&A sections. At the end of the keynote session, you can raise your hand. The raise hand uh, button would be, uh, well, that would be the signal that you have either something to share or you have a question. To get to the raise hand button, please take your cursor to the bottom of the screen. You will see a menu bar, hit participants, which will open a sidebar and you will see the raise hand button there. Since this is a sold out session with 100 participants, in order to allow as many exchanging as possible, we will give each of you, <clears throat> excuse me, a maximum of 30 seconds to speak. We are in control of the muting button, so apologies in advance, but we will cut your audio at 30 seconds. Please make sure the information you want to share is unique as we want to avoid repetitions. And finally, please uh, rename your um, Zoom name to full name. We will only take questions from those of you who are identified by a name. Also, I wanted to let you all know that the chapter's office is closed at this time, but staff is working remotely and uh, can be reached by email or by phone. We are completely operative and we are here to support our members. We are trying to adapt to the situation as, as best as we can and uh, finding ways to continue to be productive and be a support to our members. Finally, we are recording this session and uh, we will post it on our website and our YouTube channel probably tomorrow. If you are camera shy, please keep your camera off as many of you I see are. And uh, without further ado, I'm turning the screen to AIALA's president, Greg Verabian. Enjoy the session. Greg? Yes, hi. Um, well, thanks to all of you that are uh, joining us today. Um, obviously, at this time, uh, we were hoping we would be talking more about things related to a national conference uh, that our city's been working hard over the last year or more on, maybe 18 months, but it's not. So we're going to just kind of pivot on this and try and you know bring as much value uh, to our members as possible. Um, Really the purpose of this forum is, um, is for attending firms, practitioners to share their best practices for firm operations, staff well-being, um, and project delivery. We all have different size offices uh, and, and are working differently. And um, so this is an opportunity to share. Just so you know, uh, I'm a principal at HKS Architects in Los Angeles. Um, the other benefit of this uh, session is that we're gonna hear from Doug Teeger, uh, AIA, who I've had um, the pleasure to serve under while he was president of the chapter um, a couple of years ago. And um, he brings a, a great knowledge just as a, as a practitioner, obviously, uh, as, a, as a firm owner, and also as a strategist and to maybe help all of us think about focusing what we're doing right now slightly different in order to come through it healthier and and uh, economically kind of in a, in a position where things are viable with your firms. Um, and also, lastly, it's a, a time for you to share any concerns and challenges. And um, if you have any requests of the AIA LA right now, um, please, uh, please share those. As a board of directors, we're going to take as much much time as necessary in our next board meeting which will be virtual um, and we will discuss some of the questions we get so hopefully in a couple of weeks where we do this again we might be able to get back to you with some feedback um, uh, on that so um, the other thing you should know is on the website um, the AIA LA website we do have a lot of information about COVID-19 that's been um, made available both from the national uh, kind of uh, state and at the Los Angeles level. And um, I know that one thing that just uh, kind of came through is up until May 31st, and someone can correct me, uh, I believe the AIA has negotiated with Autodesk about uh, free access to their, their whole suite of, um, of design tools um, uh, to the profession. I think it's yeah, May 31st uh, at this time. Um, that it's offered. So I don't know if there's any more details on that we need to share right now, but if you go to our website, there are tons of links 
to uh, these items. Um, uh, we are again going to try and plan another town hall in a couple of weeks um, and we'll cover some different subjects. I think that's the idea. And um, let me think if there's anything else I want to hit on this thing. Um, I guess at that, with that, I'd like to just introduce Doug uh, and um, take it away. Okay, thank you, Carlo, and the entire AIA LA staff and our 2020 president, Greg Verovian, for putting this together. This is our first town hall webinar, and we look forward to continue with these and to improve for the next one to provide value for all our membership. I want to start with a quote, well, actually two quotes, by Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He was also a Holocaust survivor. And he said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So I wanna give a little introduction about myself. My name is Douglas Teeger. I spent the last 20 years as managing partner of a firm in Culver City and guided my office through the 2000 and 2008 dips. I pursued a master's degree in spiritual psychology 10 years ago and used those techniques in my leadership. Currently, I'm a business and life coach assisting firm owners, partners, and leaders in cultivating a vibrant firm culture with sound operational and financial systems. These are challenging times and it gives us an opportunity for us to lead by example. If any of you want to contact me with any questions, I'll put my email in the chat at the end of my talk, and you can just send me an email. And if you want to set a session or just talk, I'm here to help all of you. So I want to share a few ideas today about leading your team, staying on top of your financial condition, staying organized, staying focused, and staying positive. So leading your team and staying connected I think it would be a great idea for everyone who uh, has a leadership role in their team to check in one-on-one -on -one with everyone, to ask, does your staff have what they need to work at home, just to check in with how they're doing. I know how important it is for every employee to feel heard by the principal, and for you to personally call each employee is invaluable to them. It seems such a little thing to do, but I know how important it can really be and to try to maintain a sense of normalcy and connectivity, to really establish and maintain your weekly virtual meetings, both for your leadership team meetings, your project managers and their team meetings, and even to have entire office meetings through this virtual world. As PM, I suggest to develop a task-oriented system of accountability to help monitor progress with your team. As you're doing a virtual office, it's not as easy to just check by, but if we can create a sense of accountability, I think it will help you keep the projects you have on track. As firm leaders, you should be communicating what you know to date and what you are planning. Communicate the necessity for being fluid and adapting as new information comes forward. Be as open and as transparent as you feel comfortable with. How you build trust and respect with your staff during normal times will be reflected in how they support you and your firm during these challenging times. If you truly have their back, they'll have yours, like a military captain whose soldiers follow him into battle. Next, staying aware of your firm's financial condition by looking at your current situation and focusing on your cash flow. Analyze your money in the bank, your accounts receivable, accounts um, money owed, and likelihood of collecting. What's your available line of credit? Estimate your fees to be billed on current projects over the next six months, taking into consideration your potential projects on hold or your projects that might slow down. Develop a project cash flow per month for the next six months based on the above information. Understand your total monthly expenses to determine your burn rate and runway to stay in business before you begin to go negative. Investigate all your projects. The above analysis is based on no new projects coming in, but new projects do come in, even in these challenging economic environments. So create a game plan under different scenarios. What happens if 20% of your clients put projects on hold? If 40% of your clients are putting projects on hold? If a new project comes in, then readjust your analysis when new information arises. 
If anyone wants an Excel template I created for cash flow and burn rate, just email me for a copy and I'll be happy to send that out. And then be prepared for hard decisions. There is no one size fits all approach. It's a leadership decision. Options could be, and we had to do this in 2008, cutting everyone's hours or salary by some percentage. What is the right time to let a staff member go? Analyze your staff now and confirm if you have the right people in the right seats. Are your project teams balanced with the right mix of senior, intermediate, and junior members? Use this time to set up all your payments online. Set up both your uh, client payments uh, and your vendor payments. I did this about six months ago and it has made life so much easier. So I invite you all to share other ideas later in this webinar or in the chat bar. If you just have questions to ask, you can keep them uh, flowing up on the chat and we'll be addressing those. We want this to be a town hall conversation so each of you can have an opportunity for what is working for you. But let's share what's and focus on the positive and any other best practice tips. So next, staying organized. You know, I find it helpful to create a master to-do list. You know what billable work you have to do, but if work slows down and you have more non-billable time available, then make a list of all non-billable operations, uh, both for marketing and other aspects within your firm. For example, are there project templates or project processes that you have to set up? You can clean up your project naming files. You can clean up the marketing photo library. You know, we all know how uh, challenging that is and what a mess that usually is. We can clean up phase, name, uh, phase names in your office management software to help that be more organized. And staying focused. Working from home can have more distractions. I suggest making a schedule and include your non-billable projects, include your self-nurturing activities, your workout, meditation, yoga, even schedule other downtime for reading or other hobbies. And quite often we forget to eat at regular times, but I think nourishment's really important and staying on track. And then keep up with your virtual office meetings, your virtual client meetings, your billable work. Check in with your team members, create and have someone organize a virtual happy hour. I had one client that was telling me they set that up and it was a real success. Have virtual birthday celebrations for your team members, be creative. Uh, last is staying positive. I came across 10 tips that resonate with me and I wanted to share them with you. Forget about yourself and focus on others. Forget about your business, focus on your relationships. Forget about the sale, focus on creating value. Forget about your losses, focus on your opportunities. Forget about your difficulties, focus on your progress. Forget about the future, focus on today. Forget about who you were, focus on who you can be. And forget about events, focus on your responses. Forget about what's missing, focus on what's available. Forget about your complaints, focus on your gratitude. When times get tough, everyone has to make a fundamental decision to complain or to be grateful. In an environment where negative sentiment is rampant, the consequences of this decision are much greater. Complaining only attracts negative thoughts and people. Gratitude, on the other hand, creates the opportunity for the best thinking, actions, and results to emerge. Let's focus on everything you're grateful for. Communicate this and open yourself each day to the best possible consequences. So in conclusion, I want to turn this back over to Greg and open this conversation to all of you. The next 15 minutes will be open for you to share your tips regarding a remote, a remote working virtual environment. And then the following 15 to 20 minutes will be a question and answer where Greg can respond to the large office questions and I'll respond to the small and medium office questions. So as Carla said, let's be respectful of time, be succinct and to the point and keep your insights to 20 to 30 seconds, which is really one or two sentences. Leave out the story and go right into the solution. So I'm going to turn this back over to Greg and Kareen, who's going to organize looking at the hands that are raised and really have this be a discussion for what you guys are finding effective of how you're working remotely. And if there's anything new that maybe some of us haven't thought about. But let's stay out of story and really go to the solutions and valuable tips. Thanks, uh, Doug. I think what will happen is whoever, as you raise your hand and type in a question, um, 
Kareen will uh, identify that and she'll, she'll read out the questions or read out the comments uh, on behalf of the entire group. Um, and then uh, I think we'll figure out how to address each one as we as we go through it. Um, so that's it. Okay, so so far we don't have any questions or raised hands. So if anybody wants to, um, you know, we're trying this out for the first time and we would like people to raise their hands so I can unmute you and you can ask a question directly to Greg and Doug. Um, but if you're more comfortable with chatting in the chat box, um, it will we'll get to me and I will read it out loud. I'll, maybe I'll ask a question um, okay. because um, it's, it's relevant, right? Um, so we're all discovering now what it's like um, to work from home. I wasn't a big fan. I'm probably not sure yet. It's still, I'm, I'm still like on the fence of it, but it is what it is. Um, I'd like to know maybe from those of you that are part of a, maybe um, a larger firm, because I can relate to that perhaps, um, how your firm is handling it and what kind of, um, what kind of things are, are working and what are not working. And let's see how they cross maybe different sized offices. So no raise hands yet. Um, and we can come so back shy. to your question, but we do have um, a few questions in the box here. So I'm gonna read one from okay. Katie at CW Howe Engineering. Um, she asks, any ideas for marketing in this environment? Doug, you want to do it? Or you want me to try? <laughs> we, can, we can both do it. So I would okay. start by, you know, marketing is really developing relationships and checking in with your clients how they're doing. If there's any valuable information you can provide, not about COVID, but about their business. So it's really what can apply to any of your potential clients and really do as much um, uh, work in gratitude and just not looking for work, but just providing and checking in with them. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think um, this isn't a time for hard sell. I, I don't think it would be fair. I think the clients that we have uh, and your team are, are connected through your values and I think they're going through the same questions about what tomorrow and next week and the following week are going to bring, focusing in on um, just servicing them uh, as you would normally, and uh, you know, talking about the talking about the work as important as it is, and and just uh, you know, if you were going to go have a cocktail with a client, you know, reach out and do a virtual happy hour, or or just reach out and see how they are doing personally. I think it it just goes further right now. Everything is sort of in a gray area. Yeah, I have, I have two firms that have practices in Hong Kong, and they're saying life is starting to come back to normal. So it is going to end at some point. I don't know how, what our time frame is going to be, but this will, will come to an end and everything will return to a, new, to a new normal. We'll never go back to what it was, but it'll be a new normal. Okay, I just want to um, help some people out who would like to raise their hands and have, are having a hard time finding that again. If you go under participants um, and in that area, you will see little um, icons or buttons um, and it'll say you can click there to raise your hand. Um, but I do have here a comment um, from Paul Lewis. Uh, a tip, he says, to keep staff motivated, focused, and home environment, have them to get up in the morning, get dressed for work, not sweats, and get their cup of coffee and drive around the block and walk back into their home and work mode. It has made a difference for them. We also get on a video uh, conference call for a daily stretch at 4 p.m. Paul, I love those ideas. You're great. <laughs> you know, great. that is unique and novel. That's good. So we have a lot of people on this right. call, we're up to 73. Really wow. reach out with any, any tips, ideas that are working for you guys, and let's make this a town hall that's interactive. Okay, so um, we have a raised hand here from Marcus, um, and I'm gonna unmute you.
Go ahead, Marcus. Thanks. Yeah, every, every uh, 10 o'clock every day, we do have a Zoom um, office-wide kind of chat. And it's meant to be like a seven minute kind of hurdle, um, sorry, like a huddle group. So that's been helpful just to talk to everybody. Um, but I was curious more about like technical aspects. Uh, we've been using remote desktop for everyone to access remotely, but we're hitting some um, kind of internet slowdown. So I was curious what's working for everybody. So our, well, Greg, I'll let you go first and I'll, then I'll add. Oh, no, I, 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 go I'm ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those comedy skits. Yeah, go ahead. Our, um, I, our IT person reached out to us and sent a group email that the uh, residential internet market is struggling to keep up with bandwidth. So it is going to be a challenge and he suggests turning off all non-essential devices at home. If you have kids that have their iPhone logged on, their, their iPad, their Netflix, their gaming, all of that, even though it's not up and running and drawing, takes away from the bandwidth. So if you uh, let them know, keep one device hooked up, but turn the others off. I mean, we have four kids at home and 14 devices hooked up to the internet. It, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I've done the same thing here. I've got I've got two um, teenagers, um, and they um, they basically turned their their stuff off of uh, Wi-Fi uh, during kind of work hours. So the other thing I tried to do is coordinate a little bit with my wife, who is also working full time from home, um, in how we schedule meetings. And we're being a little more coordinated uh, at home in terms of that because it gets noisy. We're not in a big house, uh, and um, it, 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 it does become complicated when you're trying to talk and there's someone right next to you. It's much worse than in an open office environment where you have more, perhaps more ceiling or more space to, to lose that noise. Um, we're using, you know, Revit uh, 360 uh, for all of our, our users. Um, so far, I've heard nothing but things going okay on that side in terms of the uh, actual work software. Uh, connection. Does anyone else have any tips for improving internet at home? We don't have any here. Let's see. Okay. Uh, one question we have is, um, has anyone reached out to their service provider to request upgrades? Now we can all see, we can see all the heads. So just a, a shake of the head will give almost a, uh, uh, a town hall acknowledgement of which way it's going. So that's a no, no one has. One of my clients has actually. So yeah, cause she's working at home, all her kids and, and her husband as well. So um, they've been trying to increase their speed. We have in downtown LA and um, we haven't heard back as to um, when an actual appointment could be scheduled to upgrade our cable, uh, but we're, we understand it's anywhere from 30 to 40 days in that range. Hmm. Okay, um, I have a, a long comment here um, from Amanda um, Saloon. Uh, and so, Kareem, yeah. So oh, that's you, that's you, you're here. So. Yeah, yeah, and Can you, you know. Um, can you speak to what you you chatted me this long beautiful message? <laughs> sure, that was a clear copy paste out of an email. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the long and short of it was um, that uh, you know our our firm is looking at scenarios, uh, you know, sort of uh, easiest business as usual all the way to end of the world <laughs> and everything in between. Um, but something had come up last week that we wondered if anybody had any information on, and that was the March 17th City Council just caused termination provisions for organizations um, that uh, an email went out and it seemed to be more of a call 
to, um, you know, to voice any concerns about a motion that is directing, in summary, directing the city attorney to draft an ordinance into law in order to, uh, uh, I guess, um, ensure that seniority would be a basis for termination of employment versus, um, you know, and again, this is just summarizing what the, what the email was, you know, wanting to call us to action to voice opinion about, um, but essentially uh, having some kind of law surrounding uh, terminations, having, you know, being seniority based versus um, uh, organizations, you know, making decisions based on the health of the organization, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh you know, uh, Amanda, I was going to suggest, I, I don't know if Will, yeah, Will Wright is actually, um, you know, on this call, and since he's um, kind of the, leads our government affairs um, group uh, for the chapter, I think it's probably something we should just know, know more about, you know, and just understand a little bit more about. I'm not clearly informed enough about that specific, I have heard about it, though. I just don't know if I follow the whole logic or uh, parameter. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hi, this, <clears throat> this is Will Wright. I'm, I'm happy to do more research on that. I do know that as of yesterday, City Council um, essentially went out of session for the next two weeks. And there was a lot of uh, on the, so a lot can be done by executive order in the mayor's office because we're under this emergency provision, but I'll find out more about just cause and uh, terminations because most of all, the, uh, everything I've seen so far is relating, relating to evictions from, uh, from people that can't pay rent. So I'll look into this for you and get back to you by the end of today. Okay, I don't see any other raised hands. Again, it's just really nice to um, get everyone's voice. I can um, definitely read out some other questions that have come here up here in the chat. Um, I have one from Elizabeth. Oh, uh, there's a, again a question about um, can people get this information after the meeting? Um, and yes, again, we are recording this um, and we're gonna be sharing it on our website via also our YouTube page. Um, and I will be following up with people after this, so I'll give you a direct link to that page um, after this meeting, probably tomorrow. Um, we do have a question from um, Mark. Uh, any discussion on how employees are paid during this time, changing from full-time to contractor status? Uh, Greg, I'm going to... Oh, sorry. No. There you go. We're doing it at the same time. Um, we don't actually have um, a plan in, in action right now. We're not at that point as a firm. Um, you know, right now, I'll just say from a business side, I think our focus is trying to make sure that kind of cash flow is not inter uh, interrupted. Um, any kind of like long ARs are, um, are taken care of. Um, and so far, our clients haven't been very um, sort of negative about the outreach on that they realize that the work's been done and that the that they that they're going to pay um on these things but i think that's the biggest thing right now Elias, is keeping cash flow just as a firm internationally um our offices just for what it's worth our offices in <clears throat> in shanghai are reopening um they're kind of doing small um, small groups at a time to refill the office. Some folks are still going to work from home because they live in neighborhoods in the area, which are still under some restrict restrictions. Um, but they have found that they're going to just kind of slowly go in. They're doing thermos scan as they walk in um, on their foreheads, and uh, they have like a, I guess, a, a barcode <laughs> that that they have to uh, uh, each person before they go in that it goes to some central system on their health. So. It's just not specific to what you ask, but it's just showing kind of ways that which offices, and we're an exception because we're large, much larger, but are kind of slowly trying to kind of repopulate their space. Thanks, Greg. 
Um, so we do have three raised hands. Uh, very exciting. I'm going to start with Lance Collins. Lance, I'm going to unmute you. Go uh, ahead. Yep, I'm here. How's everybody doing? Um, I have a couple of comments and then a question just to kind of echo some of the best practices I want to share from our firm. You know, as a, as a principal in the office, I try to have a daily Skype check-in with all the project managers. At least it's 15, 20, 30 minutes just to see how the projects are going, see how everybody's doing as individuals with their families, et cetera. Um, sometimes I think the past two days here has been pretty uneventful because I think we've gotten back to a, a the previous day, certainly been a little bit more uh, disrupted. So just good to check in with everybody every day, uh, no matter what. Um, the other thing we've been doing is not quite officially, but something close to like a daily timesheet just to give everybody the opportunity to sort of record what they did, whether it's billable or non billable. So not only people can kind of remember what they did, but uh, we can kind of track estimates of potential revenue of, you know, building the projects on a daily and weekly basis um, going forward. Um, the question that I had was relative to, I guess, sort of construction, CA, and things of that nature. We have a number of projects that are in construction at the moment, and I just wanted to get anybody's feedback on what they're doing or what their experience has been with getting out to project sites and all those sorts of things and safety measures or client concerns or anything else related to the construction CA phases. Um, I will say that the Inglewood Stadium is um, full steam ahead right now. Um, they have set up um, additional kind of uh, safety measures on site related to con kind of uh, cleaning sort of stations throughout the building. Uh, there are there there are more of those for folks. So when they're going and coming from different sides of the site, I think they're trying to reduce the number of people per kind of construction crew area. Um, as much as possible to 10 or less. Um, but as you can imagine, you know, if Taylor Swift wants her concert to happen, the whole world has to stop. So uh, they're going <laughs> to, they're just going to keep plowing away on this, on this stadium. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully everything, you know, works out fine, but that's just one, as well as some stuff in San Francisco, we know that is still going on. Okay, so I think um, we're going to move on to another raised hand. Um, I'm going to go to Lily Bergman. Lily, I'm going to unmute you. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know, I mean, Greg touched on this a little bit, but I was wondering, um, maybe not just Greg, but other architecture firms, um, what kind of conversations that you guys are having with your clients? Um, are there sectors that are losing funding or struggling to continue with construction? Anybody else want to jump in? <laughs> <laughs> well, many of, many of my clients are in the single family residential section and the high end single family residential. And those uh, projects are still moving forward. I think that's one of the stronger uh, m markets in this kind of downturn. The clients do have the money and investing in real estate is a pretty sound way to go at this point. Does anyone have something yeah. for other market sectors? Yeah, we, we've had clients that were building their, their single family homes and they've emailed us nervously saying, please, please finish our house. So they, they want us to keep moving, which is good. Marcos, uh, how large of a firm are you with or who are you with? Uh, it's Alloy Architecture and Construction, so we're about eight people. Okay. So yeah, half construction, half architecture. So actually, I have a, a question for all of you who work for smaller firms, just like Marcos. Marcos mentioned limited, an issue right now is a limited internet bandwidth, for instance. I want to ask, what is working well for you in this new reality? And uh, what are the limitations of this new approach to work? And if you can share among yourselves, you know, um, I think would be, this would be very useful. Anybody? We'll give you the mic. All right, you guys. So I what can, is I, really not working? I can say something. Yeah. yeah? I mean, we, we've, been, we've been using a, a remote desktop solution called Splashtop. 
So that's been working okay. I wouldn't say great, but uh, I'm definitely interested in the Autodesk 360 world, which Greg talked about, which is probably another step up. Okay. This is uh, Lance. I'll just add, we are uh, about a 30 person company right now. Um, so far from a technology perspective, uh, we haven't really had any issues. We made the transition about a year, maybe a year and a half ago to do a lot of what we do in the cloud base. So through Microsoft 365 and SharePoint and even our accounting, things of that nature. So that's been pretty seamless and obviously using remote desktop and all those sorts of things. So the technological side has been pretty, pretty seamless for everybody, I think. And, you know, we all have laptops and Skype and a, a bunch of other things. So um, that's been pretty seamless from, a, from that perspective, just sort of getting the project continuity of, of everything has been the harder part. Lance, can I ask you a question about that with that 35 person firm a year ago? Do you recall the transition and about how long that took to migrate projects? Um, was the, it real, like the real answer is it's still going. Um, we still haven't transferred all of our files from our sort of local networks up to SharePoint sites and different things, but about 70 percent, you know, everything going back to like 20. 17 2018 is on the cloud so some of our older stuff isn't um but uh it's been challenging it's hard <laughs> uh but it's paying off and specifically in times like right now so uh, it's easier sure and do you okay, have do you um have sorry house? uh sorry oh. i'm gonna take it back and um i'd like to introduce katie just because she got cut off the last time um and katie just wanted to speak a little bit about um about how they're using Slack in their office. Okay, Katie, go ahead. Hi, this is Katie. I just wanted to mention that the app Slack has worked really well for my office, about 16 people. You're able to do screen shares and set up different channels for different projects. People can communicate really easily and cut down on their email. Um, so you aren't you know, trying to find documents and emails and information and emails on a project basis. So that's been really helpful for us. We've also transitioned to some Microsoft 365 and also G Suite. So for those of you talking about maybe moving some of your files to the cloud, but you're scared to do all of them, which I am too, we've started putting some general uh, files on our Google Drives and sharing those. That's been a nice way to allow us to not have so much remote VPN, picking up our bandwidth, um, opening up that bandwidth for people to get in and actually work on CAD files. That's great, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, um, we have another raised hand here from uh, Jeannie. Jeannie, I'm gonna, um, or Janine, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi, um, I'm out of Bakersfield. We're a firm of 25 and I will say we were not, we had no employees working remote before this. And as of last week, we um, started hearing concerns from our staff. So luckily we started working early in the week to get them remote, started looking at remote, remote desktop and our, our um, IT person wasn't, uh, was very concerned about security. So we ended up doing team viewer and Thursday night when governor made his order, we got all 25 people loaded up to team viewer which allows them to be home on their computer and, and work remotely using the power of the machine here at in the office so all the computers are on here at the office and they're all working just like they would at home and that that seems to be working pretty well for us i'd be curious to ask how many of the firms out there would consider continuing remote work once this blows over and allowing people that have an hour plus commute to continue working from home. Yeah, I think it's a good chance to experience. I mean, it's kind of forcing us all to experiment in, in this world. So uh, I think it's definitely transforming my idea of how to move forward. 
Yeah, I think it's a really a good opportunity to rethink how, how we're going to be working in the future. For sure. Um, okay, so we have another raised hand from Diane Hamlin. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Diane, are you there? Do not hear her. Okay, sorry about that. There you are. Um, we, I work with HDR, so we're global 10,000 people. We have a lot of people who are normally remote, but I think from an architecture perspective, our teams and really close collaboration is so important. So we've instituted uh, team meetings at least every other day to really check in with people, which has been beneficial. But I think being remote all the time is a struggle in that we do so much of sketching and dialogue and hearing other conversations and it's how our junior staff learn and I'm concerned right now with our junior staff that they're not receiving as much continual input and feedback and, and ability to engage and, and react to exactly what they're working on. So I think we've always had a policy where people can work remotely intermittently, but not as a status quo. And as much as I appreciate the time I receive back by not commuting into the office, I really miss the dialogue and connection that happens throughout the entire day. So we we did institute shifting. Um, we've had all of our Revit models on a Revit server where we have external firms for an MEP. Uh, we've had them on BIM 360, but over the last week we've gotten all of our other active projects onto BIM 360 so that it's a lot faster and more seamless. But uh, per everyone's comments previously, just trying to get the Wi-Fi traffic down at home since we have multiple people and kids uh, using our bandwidth is how we're making those things efficient. Diane, I have a question in terms of working with the younger staff remotely because I think that definitely is an important issue to discuss. Does a a senior designer working with a ju junior designer doing screen share, has that been effective or you feel it's really just the one-on-one -on -one stopping by the desk that's gonna be invaluable and just cannot, cannot transition to a virtual office? I, I think that is what we're doing right now. We actually have an active competition and we're, you know, our junior staff engaging with our, our designers are working pretty hot and heavy uh, producing for uh, virtual client engagements that we've been having. But I think just sitting next to each other and hearing other dialogue, you overhear a lot of important conversation during the day and just having the ability to look over at someone's screen and tweak what they're doing or if you see them going down the wrong path. We're doing a ton of screen sharing uh, through Skype for Business as well as we have WebEx uh, if we need it, but I think there's just the unplanned occurrences where you're hearing conversations and you can chime in with important information and or seeing what someone's, someone's working on and tweaking that and being able to grab the four people in the office to have a quick huddle and sit down and view something. And even though we're on the computer, there's a lot of sketching and models and other things that aren't quite as seamless in the current working environment. Thank you. I have one other question. Because we have over 70 people online right now, to do just a, a quick poll, if people want to put in the chat, X number of projects out of total number of projects that have been put on hold. So let's say your firm has 50 active projects. It would be in two or put it on hold just write it as two slash 50. And let's see what the uh, 70 people here uh, have going on in their own firm, if there is really a slowdown or, or how big of a slowdown it's gonna be. Can you guys hold on one second? I'm gonna make the chat available to everyone. Right now it's just going to me, so just hold, hold on. Okay, you should be able to chat with everyone right now. 
I'll re um, Marcus and Jack Turson, I'll redo yours. There we go. Are you guys, everyone seeing these? Great. Yes. I mean, I would look at those numbers and say that's not not terrible. I mean, it's definitely a little bit of a slowdown. I would have assumed it, it would have possibly been more than that, but I'm really grateful to see those numbers and have everyone here see those numbers. That it's it's I think 2008 was almost worse, uh, I but I don't know where we're going to be going. Yeah, Doug, I agree. I I feel like in 2007 or eight, uh, I think it literally was the water just turned off in some cases. Um, and it wasn't even, you know, it was, it was far more, um, invasive, at least initially. Um, I know we're in the early stages and I'm going to stay positive on this stuff. Hopefully it's, it's an indication of maybe a slower slowdown, let's just say, and hopefully a pickup. Right. I don't see it as much a, at this early stage, really an economic financing issue. It's a, a, just just the everything just shutting down it's just a very different model of what's going on i i think um just from a from a, someone wrote here something about the types of projects um, i think the projects that we're hearing just from our firm uh, kind of globally right now that are the most affected are hospitality anything that's related to the travel industry um let's just say food and beverage industry, unless you're, unless you have a warehouse, I guess. Um, but that's where we've seen probably the largest percentage of stoppage is in our hospitality group, uh, which was literally up till, till now was just burning uh, big time because the hotel industry was in fact um, doing quite well and the travel industry was doing well, airports, uh, all that. So I think that's probably the the one segment that's probably hit the hardest right right now. I, I would think the major airport projects like LAX is still continuing. Um, yeah, LAX, San Diego airports, they all have projects which are either under RFPs right now or are ready to, to release and make announcements, I think so. Um, so on that related project, um, there are questions. Um, Jessica and Chelsea both asked, um, wondering what sort of projects are going on hold, public, private, education, retail, which I think you just touched base on. And um, would also be interested to know how many new projects um, people have had since March 13th. Um, so if you want to participate in that, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, but let's have Doug and Greg. Go ahead. For yeah, I think that's a great question of new projects since March 13th, or actually I'd say new projects since March 1st. And I would say we uh, have had two proposals that we submitted as well as the competition I previously mentioned. Um, so clients, I think one of my questions is, is are, how are people creatively figuring out to interview for projects because we do have a couple that are moving forward in addition to hosting uh, client use meetings and Zoom so far seems to be one of the best ways to try to bring a group together. But when you're engaging with a client for the first time, it really is difficult to get everyone together and read body language and whatnot, not having the ability to both see faces as well as engage with a written or sketch type of dialogue. I would agree it is a challenge. I mean, Greg, I'd be curious how your firm is pursuing new ventures with virtual meetings versus in-person meetings. Yeah, um, we're uh, interviewing for a uh, projects next week they're all being done virtual I, I think what's 
maybe going to happen is while the interviews may take place because I think they need to get themselves in order, I think some of the folks we've been hearing about say that um, because they're probably not working as efficient as a client body as normal, as they normally might, um, that the decision instead of taking either being instant a week or two weeks later, it might be something that we don't hear about until, you know, three or four weeks later. Um, and they said it's not because their interest in the project has changed or their uh, plans to move forward. It's just trying to build consensus from kind of executive leadership groups that make decisions on it sometimes is, is taking a bit longer. You know, I think this gives opportunity to increase your online presence, to work on your website, on your social media posting, uh, just anything you can to get your, your branding out there. So it looks like, um, according to the messages that we have had, uh, seems like people have had new projects since March 1st, um, which is good to see. Um, um, uh, Will, do you want to unmute yourself and, um, and address the questions that you have? Well, just two quick questions for the group here. You know, what is it from AI, what is it from AI Los Angeles that we can be most helpful with? If you have ideas for that, uh, you can either share now or share directly with each of us as staff members. But also I'm curious if you have any, um, presentation or pro professional development seminars that you need access to that you'd like us to provide or if you already have available. Uh, we're looking at all the different uh, virtual forums that we can offer. And so if you have ideas, please share. And, you know, essentially we really want to be um, proactive and responsive and, and, and continue our relevance to you as the members. Well, I think one thing that'd be helpful to post is what's happening with the building department, what's happening with the planning department, what are the delays with submittals that are already in plan check and with new submittals. If there's any type of guideline from the city as to what they're doing, it would just be good to share with, with all the membership. Doug, and that's been posted on our website uh, yesterday and I can continue to update that on a weekly basis. Is there any summary you want to give so you can let everyone here know uh, what's going on with the city? Um, just real quick. So on Sunday, March 22nd, City of LA sent out uh, from the planning department and from LA Building and Safety the appointments and the e-portal so that you can file your plans online. But essentially, they are going through a new situation to where you're going to have to set up an appointment well in advance because they're, you know, obviously min uh, minimizing the amount of people that can go to plan check. And then inspections are going to be severely impacted as well. But every week, they'll be updating that with new, uh, you know, best practices. And that information right now is currently on our website. And we'll be sending that in the newsletter. I believe it's going out tomorrow or today. I also wanted to add one thing. We are working with uh, AA National to negotiate deals with software providers. And uh, right now we, uh, we have uh, um, achieved the result with Autodesk, but we, uh, as more deals come in, we will keep you posted. Everything will be posted on our website. Uh, and uh, we will make sure that we will uh, commu to communicate with you on this progress on a regular basis. And also I see that we have Nikki Dennis Stevens uh, with us today. Nikki is the executive director of AIA California. And uh, this is one of the many town halls that we are hosting uh, at local chapter level. In also in light of a larger um, town hall scheduled by AIA California on uh, um, March 30th, to which we would like you to participate. That's why if you can send us your uh, uh, ideas, suggestions, or uh, um, ask for support from uh, um, AA in general, we would be very happy to uh, collate all this information and address them at this larger forum on April 30th. And Nikki, if you're here, you want to mute yourself. You want to say one um, couple of things about what we are planning for the 30th? 
Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm glad you could uh, all come together today. You know, it's interesting. Uh, this is the third town hall I've been on uh, in the last few days. And um, I think the, the, the common thread that I'm hearing is, is people coming together as this community and not feeling so isolated. And I know that's really tough um, when, you know, all of our worlds have been upended. So um, I think you've had a, a good turnout today. And, and the town hall, the first one that we're going to have on the 30th, um, you know, we're going to look at um, some of the, the themes that we're hearing across the state. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the regulatory um, impacts and the things that we're seeing statewide. I think we lost Nikki. Um, well, we do just have a few more minutes left um, and I have a few raised hands. Um, and then I think we'll be wrapping it up after this. Um, Lily, did you have a, another comment or question? Yeah, I thought, um, I mean, just reading the chat window here, it's great to see, you know, resources that people are posting and just kind of of the moment things. I was wondering if AIA could maybe create like a, I don't even know if you have the capacity to do this, but you know, some, some place where people can post kind of freely for resources for COVID-19 or things that they're hearing on, you know, the grapevine. Um, Lily, we absolutely can do that. Um, that's something that we've been talking about internally. Um, so that's something that we can, we can move quickly on. I think if I got cut off a second ago. Uh, we are going to also start having um, town halls that deal with um, uh, groups that are more homogeneous in terms of firm size together or small firms can come together. And I think that will be helpful um, regardless of, of where you're physically located. So, so thanks everyone for letting me join you. And Lance, I think you have a comment or a question. Yeah, I had a, a comment. I'm going to put my hat on as the uh, chapter president for the National Organization of Minority Architects here for a second um, and just kind of pass along some information from some of our members. We've been trying to share uh, resources from AIA California and AILA. Invite, and our membership was all invited to this event here today. I'm not sure how many people were able to make it. But one of the comments that we've heard the most is, making sure there's enough support for the small firms and in particular sole proprietors uh, from an HR legal perspective, from you know small business loans, all those sorts of things, that if the chapter can either at least provide that information or provide any sort of physical, you know, whatever virtual support in that process would be great as well too. And Lance, this is great because we are planning, uh, this is just the first of a series and uh, uh, we will address in these issues that you just brought up in, in, uh, in, uh, in the next uh, um, uh, sessions coming up, in the next town hall style. Uh, so right. I think the plan is to do, I think we think realistically, it's probably every two weeks we're going to try and do this. Uh, so we have enough time to put together relevant content and have more information as things develop and um, see how everybody else is doing over more of a, time, a longer time period rather than a short time period. No, that, that's excellent. I would certainly keep our membership all looped in on this as well, too. Absolutely. I think we can wrap it up. Well, yep. Yeah. Sorry, I was just just going to mention that um, as as you heard, we it, the session is recorded, um, our, and it'll be on our website. I think for uh, it'll be posted within the next two days for sure. Um, but if anybody has any direct questions, you can go directly to AIALA or. If you want to reach me at HKS, I'm happy to have a conversation. It's G Varabian at HKSinc.com. But um, other than that, I don't think I have anything more. I'm really glad that we got, you know, 73 people. I think we're, uh, it's pretty good out of the 100 that registered. Um, so unless there's anything else, Carlo or Doug? No, I think it was a, a good first town hall. I really wanted to make it about you guys and just to, uh, have you share what's going on. So we'll be doing more and maybe in the future we'll be more focused on content uh, rather than today was to try to be a interactive town hall. But thank you all very much. Thank you very much for taking your time. Stay healthy.
you so much.